USA! On Monday, a three-day journey ended for these demonstrators in Hilo. The march on Helco led these activists, who are in opposition to the expansion of the geothermal energy industry in Puna, to the doorstep of the Hawaii Electric Light Company headquarters. Organizers plan to deliver a demand to Helco President J. Ignacio that the utility stop its contract for new geothermal development on the island of Hawaii. On Saturday, close to 100 marchers hit the highway from Pahoa High School. To give the petition more force, it shows that we are dedicated. We are here for the long term. We want to not let this happen next year, the year after. You know, we want clean energy in our community. On Sunday night, after the marchers reached Hilo, we caught up with them at their campsite on the Community of Christ land on Kinaoli and Puanico. Paul Kuykendall sat down to talk with us on camera in an interview session under the light of the moon. They shouldn't do any more geothermal development in Powiki, but they certainly, given the history, they shouldn't be doing anything more given all these questions that actually have been documented. The community already knew about it, but the Adler Health Study helped to document many of those questions, and we're hoping that the rest of Hawaii gets to see the truth about geothermal power. Outside the Helco building on Monday, about 100 people were already there waving signs and beating drums when we arrived to film. Things were already noisy and tense. At the request of Helco, police asked these drummers to move because the noise was disrupting business inside. Just go. Get the drums away so get my phone. No, no, no. I want to get Soon, the marchers who left the campsite earlier that day joined the crowd, doubling the size of the demonstration. As the organizers of the rally went inside to meet with the Helco president, the din outside reached a fever pitch. Finally, Jay Ignacio emerged. Jay's accepting our petition. I got your petition, and I, I met with Bob and, and Mrs. Sparks, and uh, we got some good information. We got better insight as to your concerns. Uh, we're gonna work with, uh, continue to work with your alliance uh, to see if we can come to a, a good resolution. So, uh, thank you. Mahalo thank for you. listening to us. This represents the food that we grow in Puna. It's organic, it's good, and it's homegrown. And with geothermal plants now being able to go into farmland, we're not going to be able to grow the same good food. And this is from people of Puna to you. It's not Helco against Puna. It's just people trying to save their home in the sustainable place that we're growing. So, thank you for listening. Thank you. We spoke to Puna Pono Alliance leader Bob Petrici immediately afterwards. I, I guess it was really nice to, uh, Jay to, to meet with us and we did have an interesting conversation. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's going to withdraw the contract, but we asked him to consider a moratorium, and I think he is going to think about that, and we're going to talk about that some more. So uh, hopefully we can get at least a moratorium on the RFP until the health study is uh, completed. I, I think he was uh, not expecting uh, that many petition signatures or this many people out front. Yeah. Were you expecting this many people out here? Uh, I was, and I was hoping for even more. I think as, as we go on, we'll probably get more. Uh, he, was, he really liked the map. He accepted the map. He asked a lot of questions about where do we live on the map, and a lot of questions about, you know, how did the map come to be, and, you know, how did, where did all the pins come from, and that kind of stuff. He, he seemed to indicate that our locations for the proposed developments were correct. He, he seemed to, he said something to the effect that our information was very good and uh, he couldn't talk about it, but that, that, that looked like we knew what we were doing. And then, as the crowd began to disperse, we went inside the Helco building ourselves for an interview with Ignacio. Yeah, they're, they're concerned the way they express it is that we're, we went out for a request for proposals mm -hmm. from geothermal developers. Right. Prior to getting our integrated resource plan approved by the Public Utilities Commission, okay, that that's one of their concerns. And is that a valid concern? What I explained to them is that 
uh, it's a continuum process, this integrated resource planning. We already have an approved integrated resource plan, and we're in the process of... From the PUC. From the PUC. And we're in the process of moving to the next uh, iteration of that plan for the next uh, increment. So the existing plan already has uh, components that, that says we were planning to expand geothermal so the, the request for proposal is actually consistent with the existing plan we, f we filed in june of this year um, a proposed new integrated resource plan and it also has a component of geothermal in there but it's not approved yet by the public utilities commission how about the uh, this adler working study group Draft came out. Have you had a chance to read that? What's I've that? I've looked through that draft. Yes. Is that gonna? Would that uh, maybe it comes out a little late for you, or I don't know. But uh, is that gonna impact the way you go forward? You think maybe? We we uh, discussed that with the Puno Puno Alliance. Um, they had expressed a desire to put a moratorium on the RFP to to delay the RFP until the results of that, and I kind of asked if could we do it in parallel, still address the concerns and the, the Adler uh, effort uh, in parallel with proceeding with the development. But we really didn't come to any conclusion on that. This is just a, a fact-finding thing. That the health study would be a whole entire other process. E exactly. And we had some discussions with the Alliance uh, about that. And it's still not clear what's going to result. So this is just the, the beginnings. Um, what we put in our request for proposal is that any developer uh, selected or any developer that pr proceeds needs to comply with all uh, regulations, laws and regulations, and, and that's how we capture uh, complying with um, public health concerns. I guess this question is a little bit tricky, but would you say that, that the uh, current uh, geothermal producer right now, uh, is that, uh, have they satisfied you in that regard? Well, it's more a question, has they satisfied the, the regulators in that regard? We have a contract with uh, Pune Geothermal Ventures. Much of it has to do with uh, electrical production, but there is requirements that they follow and comply with all uh, pertinent regulations. But it's really the regulator, the appropriate regulator, that needs to, to follow up with them on that. What, what, what's their output at this point? They can go up to 38 megawatts. 38, and, and you're looking for an additional 50 at this point? Up to an additional 50. Up to an additional yeah. 50. Um, by up to, what do you mean? What, what would be the range? We're still evaluating what, uh, what makes sense with respect to additional geothermal en energy. We went out with the request for proposals. We've got some proposals, and we're doing the evaluation. We haven't made the determination that we're going to commit to 50 more megawatts of geothermal or whether it's going to be 25. We have not, we have not uh, decided upon that yet. We're still evaluating. Have you pinpointed um, where, it, if everything goes uh, the way you would like it to, where it is you'd like to build? We have not pinpointed that, no. A lot of people said the RFP placed a preference on the Kona side. Is that true? I never, I didn't really see that, but I, maybe I just didn't look at the document thoroughly enough. From a transmission standpoint, load, load balance between where the power is generated and where the power is used, uh, it would have been preferable to have geothermal located on the west side or any new power plant on the west side. Whatever, whatever you get put up, uh, what, whatever's new as far as, far as geothermal goes, uh, would the entire output be, be uh, shipped off to Oahu? Oh, no, with this request for proposal, the intent is all on island use. Because I keep, you know, their signs say, you know, we're not, we're not Oahu's uh, battery and things like that. Um, no, it is, it is all, it, all, it's, on, it, it's all, all on. It's all for local consumption yes, on this island. Yes, Okay. Is there, does, does the geothermal resource exist over on the Kona side at this point? Study is done, I, I forgot the exact date, but study is done 20 years ago by the state, sponsored by the state, maybe even long, longer than that. They've indicated some potential uh, West Hawaii uh, geothermal zones there. So there is potential, but um, turning potential into actual geothermal development is, is, is um, there's more steps involved beyond that.
are you surprised by the turnout uh, today? I mean, yeah, that was a pretty size for for you know for for a working day for most people. Now that's a pretty sizable turnout. I, I'm not surprised. Uh, they started a petition. They they have a website, and I've been receiving phone calls, and I've been receiving emails, and they've been updating me as to how many uh, how many petitioners have signed up. Uh, I am surprised with the number that they indicated today that there were 3,000. My my understanding was there was a little over a thousand, so 3,000 is more than than what I anticipated. But I'm not surprised by the number of people that showed up here today. Right now, by 3,000, you mean 3,000 signatures on the petition? Because right. Probably two to 300 people outside, by the looks of it. Right. So uh, in, and as of this weekend, I I had learned that I think there were. A, over a thousand people who had signed up, at least the electronic uh, mm -hmm. petition. And then I, were, I was receiving uh, voicemail messages and I was listening to all the voicemail messages. So I wasn't surprised that we had a large crowd here today. Ideally, we'd like to be able to get geothermal energies to help reduce the cost of electricity on our island and still maintain reliable service. But we also need to address the public's concern and we certainly need to um, do geothermal energy in a safe manner. Will will um, the average consumer see a cost reduction if, if this uh, geothermal is put online? I mean, you do you do have shareholders who who have a say in, in all of this. Well, the the proposal is to have independent developers develop geothermal energy. Um, we're we're still evaluating the the bids that we receive, but certainly. The intent is to get lower cost uh, generation of energy so that we can pass that savings on to customers and, and provide lower bills to our customers. Will the, that, that's nice in theory, will it, will it, in, in practice, uh, I don't ever recall rates going down. <laughs> in <laughs> what, I wish I could disclose to you that the pricing that we've gotten mm -hmm. for uh, the, the proposals that were submitted to us. I can't at this time. It's a closed bid process. Everything's confidential. So I can't tell you whether it's, it's going to lower bills or not. But I can tell you going into the process, our whole intent was to get lower cost energy so we could drive the bills down. Can you tell me how many bids you've received up to this point? Uh, I, I don't want to disclose that at this do time. You, uh, do you have a timeline for, for, di for um, disclosing uh, the winning bid? We were hoping to make a selection by the September time frame. There may be some delays in that. Uh, we went out and requested a little more information. Um, so it's probably going to be later than September, but hopefully before the end of the year, um, we would be able to make a selection. Once we make a selection, though, that doesn't mean it's, it's a, a firm commitment. We'd probably do more detailed negotiations with whoever is selected.